Hello, this is Spartan Commander, and this is a 456 Rome Total War Brotherhood game that I've put onto YouTube. This battle is an unusual battle, as you will see as it unfolds. As you can see, I'm fighting this on a Germanic forest map, um, with the big open plains, as we talked about before. Or if you want to bring, bring barbarian factions, you can get the woods bonus, as well as the winter bonus, and you can plan those nasty ambushes from the trees there. Okay, um, but just to say, this is an unusual battle, because this is a... An army, a team of pikes and spears against a team of all Roman armies. Okay, so this is an unusual battle. Pikes and spears versus Roman armies. This wasn't organised. This is just uh, factions that people decided to choose. And as I say, our teams have, team has gone all pike and spear factions. And we're up against four good Roman generals. Okay, our first teammate is Brotherhood member Steve Longshanks. Who has got 14 Spartans and 5 of the cheap uh, short range archers. Okay, so that's his usual um, Spartan army there. Our next teammate is a Brotherhood member, Dionysos, who has bought the Macedon faction. Now, Dionysos has got 13 pikes, 2 archers, and 6 cavalry. Okay, 13 pikes, 2 archers, and 6 cavalry. I uh, see Dionysos is very good with the, um, the Macedon faction. And uh, it should be interesting to see how well he does during the course of the battle. Okay, our third teammate is a uh, Brotherhood member, Bubo, who's bought the Seleucid faction. I think this is his faction of choice in general. And Bubo has got 11 infantry, 6 cavalry, and 3 archers. Okay, 11 infantry, 3 archers, and uh, 6 cavalry. If you look at the uh, upgrades on his infantry, you'll see he's only got gold shield, gold attack, which is unusual for Salisa with their morale being so low, not to have an experience stripe. And just to show you the length of those uh, Salisa pikes there, remember enemy troops have got to fight all the way down those pikes to kill the man on the other end. As I said before, that's quite a tall order for Roman troops. I'd just like to draw your attention to his three archer units, okay? They're only short range archers, but if you notice, uh, that the upgrades here you'll see one two three four five six seven. they are fully upgraded okay they're fully upgraded okay they're only short range but they are fully upgraded archers there and let's say he's got three of those um as i say um i think Sally said army for bubo is mostly the most of the power is in the cavalry so have a look at the upgrades okay can you see he's got eight upgrades uh that's two uh, sorry th two experience stripes gold shield gold attack okay and for you that those of you that like um statistics that gives them a 12 attack and a massive 28 defense remember we call these guys the tanks of the ancient world because they're armored from head to toe and can be battle winning troops if used correctly okay so they've got eight upgrades on as i say bubo uh, tends to spend most of his money on his cavalry because he uses them very effectively around the battlefield and our fourth teammate is myself spartan commander who has got 14 spartans and five of the cheap ranger archers so there you go you can see our team are all pikes and spears here okay as i say this wasn't organized this is just um factions that people decided to choose and we're up against four really good roman generals this should be a great one for you to watch and here is the other team we have brotherhood member mad king who's bought the rome brutio faction now mad king has got eight infantry six archers and six cavalry Okay, so that's what um, Mad King's got. Eight infantry, six archers, six cavalry there. If you notice there, can you see he's got his uh, units in Testudo? Okay, but only eight infantry. Do you think that might be, um, you know, a little bit uh, short of infantry on the modern day battlefield? It'll be interesting to see how well he does during the course of the battle with that uh, custom built army. Okay, uh, their next teammate is a Brotherhood member, Bark. Now, Bark has got 10 infantry, 5 archers, and 5 cavalry. Okay, 10 infantry, 5 archers, 5 cavalry. If you look at the upgrades on his uh, infantry here, can you see his forward units there have just got gold shield, gold attack on? Okay. Um, so he's just got gold shield, gold attack. And if you go further back into his formation, can you see that his two other battle lines there have got 7 upgrades on? So he's got a veteran stripe, gold shield, gold attack on his um the two last two lines of his infantry uh, formation and then you've got his town watch here as kind of a pilot shield unit but bearing in mind um uh it is just a cheap unit there it's not too uh, too bad for soaking up pilots so to say the, uh, the the enemy will um those forward units will make first contact with the enemy take the enemy pilots and then the tired enemy troops have got to fight through those um gold shield gold attack units to his more elite upgraded troops okay there's his five archers there 
and he's got his five um, cavalry. Let's have a look at the upgrades on his cavalry. Okay, he's got eight upgrades. Okay, so that's two experienced stripes, two veteran stripes, gold shield, gold attack on his cavalry. We know Praetorian cavalry do really good with just gold shield, gold attack, but you to put two experienced stripes on them, and like we've said before, that makes them extremely elite cavalry. Okay, so I think that's quite an interesting army build there. And as I say, I think that's probably a custom army build for this battle. Okay, their third teammate is RTW player Ambirix. And he has bought the Rome Julio faction. Now Ambirix has got seven infantry, four archers and four cavalry. Okay, um, and as you can see there, I think he's got his units in Testudo right at the beginning of the battle. So we have a closer look there. There you go. And that's uh, that's the units, all of his units in Testudo there. But what I'd like to draw your attention to is his infantry. Okay, he's got 12 infantry and they've all got seven upgrades on. He's got a veteran stripe, gold shield, gold attack. And make no mistake, that veteran stripe really makes a difference to um, how your infantry fight during the course of the battle. So he's got 12 infantry there and I think his general has got, yep, yeah, his general has got eight upgrades Okay, so he's got two veteran stripes, gold shield, gold attack. That's going to make that unit incredibly difficult to kill. Okay, and then he's got his four archers, and I think his four cavalry he's got there. And of course, his upgrades are only gold shield, gold attack on his cavalry, because he spent uh, most of his money on the upgrades of his infantry. Okay, mate, no mistake, that is some serious infantry there. They even got the infantry general to give even more morale there, even though they've got experienced stripes. Okay, their fourth teammate is uh, somewhere in the woods. We'll just see if we can um, locate him. Oh, there he is. And their fourth teammate is... Uh, IOW SRAX, okay, IOW SRAX, and he has got the bog standard 31k Roman army of 14 infantry and 6 cavalry. Okay, now from back here, can you, does his units look like they're in Testudo? But no, they're not in Testudo, they're just in a really tight, close, a compact formation here and this is a nightmare for cavalry um, your your cavalry does a lot of damage when it hits infantry units by um, kind of splitting the infantry units up so they can um, you know hit the uh, the enemy infantry quite easily but in these compact tight formations there you smash uh, cavalry into those and you'll end up losing most of your cavalry um, and not for a lot of gain there. Okay, so there's the enemy team there. I'd just like to do a cavalry count here okay, so Ambirex has got four we know that um, SRAX has got six, so that's ten cavalry units there so far. Okay, so that's ten cavalry units so far. Then um, Bark has got five, so that's fifteen cavalry units. Okay, and we know that um, Mad King has got uh, six there. So the enemy have a cavalry count of twenty-one. Okay, twenty-one cavalry there. Okay, now if I remember right, our team has only got, because Steve and me went Greek cities, that we've put our team in a cavalry disadvantage straight away. But if you notice here, can you see that Dionysus has got six companion cavalry, and Bubo has got six cataphracts. So we've actually got 12 cavalry against their 21. Yes, now we are um, anti-cavalry pike and spear units here, um, factions here, but veterans will know that if you use your cavalry properly, get in behind these pike and spear units and smash into the rear of them when they're engaged, you can cause devastating damage there. So don't forget, they've got 21 cavalry against our 12. This should be a great battle for you to watch, and I hope you enjoy it. Okay, at this stage of the battle, I thought we'd have a look at Dionysus' Macedonian formation here. Can you see his forward units have just got gold shield, gold attack on? Can you see those six upgrades? That's gold shield, gold attack for his forward units. Go further back into his formation, and you can you see his other units have got eight upgrades, okay? Two experienced strokes, gold shield, gold attack there. And they, uh, they go all the way back to the rear of his battle formation there. Okay, so those first units there will take enemy pilers, make first contact with the enemy. The tired enemy troops have got to fight through them to get to his better upgraded troops there. So it'll be interesting to see how well that formation does during the course of the battle. Should be a great one for you to watch. Okay, at this very, very early stage of the battle here, you can see IOW SRAX putting his credentials straight on the table here and showing you how aggressive he's going to be right from the beginning of the battle there. Okay, you can see he's moved those tightly compact infantry units forward there. Um, as I say, showing um, how aggressive he wants to be right from the beginning of the battle here. Okay, if you notice here, I've run my Greek cities over to, uh, to face those uh, Scipioi troops. And you can see there, we were thinking, I think Bubo and myself, I think I was thinking there, maybe we could do a lightning attack onto um, SRAX there. 
Um, but uh, we didn't at the time. But I think that's what was going through our mind there. Maybe we could, because he's a you know he's a little bit of distance away from his alloys there. Maybe Booba and myself could have done a lightning attack on Srax there and then. But uh, as I say, we um, we decided that uh, we wouldn't do it then. I don't think. So as I say, this is a very, very early stage of the battle here. Just to say that Bubo's um, infantry, as I say, he's only got gold shield, gold attack on, which is unusual for a said because their morale's not very good, so you know, usually put an experienced stroke on them. But what he does with the tactics of his Seleucid army, those uh, pikemen there will just be a holding and pinning force. He won't do anything spectacular with them. He uses his cavalry for the spectacular stuff. If you notice, he moves his cavalry around the battlefield, smashing the targets with those well-upgraded cataphracts, but his infantry there are just kind of like a holding and pinning for us most of the time so that's quite a good uh, tactical use of Seleucid there as I say using those um, lower upgraded pikemen as I say to be a holding force while he moves his cataphracts around the battlefield okay at this stage of the battle I wanted to have a look at Mad King's cavalry and this may well surprise you Mad King if you notice there has fully upgraded his um, Praetorian cavalry three experience stripes gold shield gold attack Okay, so make no mistake, this, this cavalry now, fully upgraded, is massively elite. That gives them a huge 17 attack and a massive 28 defense. You could well be looking at battle winning troops here, okay, with those upgrades on. So it'll be interesting to see how well he uses the cavalry around the battlefield during the course of the battle. Should be a great one to watch. Okay, so this is still the very early part of the battlefield, uh, battle here. Can you see um, Booba running his Seleucid pikemen forward there in an aggressive move towards the enemy Julii troops? Okay, now those uh, enemy Julii infantry there will be throwing loads of pilots in. As you can see, it's raining pilots into Booba's uh, units there. Now remember, those 120-man units are extremely susceptible to any kind of missile damage. Now remember, that unit is a 120-man unit, and it was 120-man just up to a few seconds ago until it ran into that hail of pilers, and now it's down to 27 men. Nearly lost 100 men within a few seconds of running forward. That's how much uh, the pilot damage has done to that unit there. Okay, so I just thought I'd show you that. So that pilot shield unit's done its job there, soaked up a heck of a lot of pilots there, leaving the main part of his army intact. But uh, as I say, you can see that uh, nearly lost 100 men in a few seconds there, just to the pilot uh, attack. That's um, how susceptible these big 120-man units are to any kind of missile damage. Okay, so uh, as I say... It'll be interesting to see how Bubo uses that infantry, whether he's still going to advance onto the Julio infantry or whether he's going to stand there and try and invite an attack. Okay, can you see that pilot shield unit? He's got just a few men left. He's taking it forward again, hoping to soak up any more pilots there. Okay, you can see most of his 120-man units are still intact, but that one unit there that has soaked up most of the pilots there are thrown. He's only got four men left in that 120-man unit now. So, um, as I say, that, uh, that pilot shield uh, unit there that he put in front of his main army has done its job. Now, if you notice here, can you see, I still think Srax is still a little bit isolated here on the flank. And uh, make no mistake, we have noticed this. Can you see Dionysos moving his Macedonians across to this flank? Right, so just pause the game for a second. Okay, so you can see um, my... Um, if you notice here I've got no pilot shield units in front of my old battle formation and that's because I have got no intention of being defensive in this battle I am going to attack I'm going to take the battle to the enemy I'm not going to stand there and let them throw pilots into me so that's why I've got no pilot shield um, unit in this old battle formation I'm just going to go for SRAX um, if that's what the team decides remember this is a team game and when you play as a team um, it's best to operate as a team Make sure the battle plan that you've got, everybody's on board with and know exactly what's happening here. But as I say, over here we feel that SRAX is a little bit isolated. And with our Macedonian ally moving over here as well, we may well go to hit um, SRAX there on the flank. Okay, can you see here Bubo moving his um, Seleucid army forward? May well be here to hold and pin the Julii troops while we hit XRAX on the other flank, okay? So that's why Bubo's moving forward. He's going to hold and try and pin the Julio troops there, which is what he's doing. See how he's moving quite forward there, then put his pikes down there to engage the forward Julio enemy infantry units. So he wants to hold and pin Julio if he can. Well, um, myself and Dionysos move over to the left flank here to try and take out um, Srax here, okay? So Dionysos and myself bringing 
our Macedonians and Greek city units over here to attack. Now it wouldn't surprise me if Astrax pulled back right there you go. Now that's a good tactical move there by Astrax pull back. You can see both the Macedonians and my Greek city units moving towards him. So I think that's a good tactical move. And if I was him I'd keep moving back. Don't stand your ground there because when we hit we're going to hit quite hard here with both Macedon and my Greek city units okay. So um, as I say that's a good move there by Srax um, moving back there as he's done a good tactical withdrawal okay we've got his cavalry out to our left flank there but also we've got Dionysus his Macedonian companion cavalry there may be ready to counter any cavalry attack there by Srax but as I say I'm going to be aggressive with my Greek city units I'm going to keep moving forward as I say Bubo here let's doing a good job of holding and pinning those forward units of the Julii uh, enemy Julii army there so he's done well there as I say, in holding and pinning there in that wide battle formation. And as you can see here, Steve is facing two Roman armies. He's facing the Brutii Roman army and the Scipii uh, Roman army there. And don't forget those archers, the enemy archers will be shooting in here. Probably, I would have thought, targeting our archers rather than the flank of um, the, uh, the Greek city units there. Okay. So as I say, the main action here is going over on the left flank here where we are trying to engage Srax. Okay, but Srax, as I say, doing a good tactical move there by pulling his infantry back. Um, and if I was him, I'd keep moving. He doesn't want to take the impact of Macedon and Greek cities hitting him here. Okay, as I say, he's throwing loads of pilots into my um, Spartans. Ever remember, the Spartans have got two hit points and great specifications, and they lose a lot less men to missiles than other units. Right, can you see here? I'm charging my Greek cities forward. I'm now engaging Srax Escipioi troops. Okay, he's throwing loads of pilots into my troops here, as you can see. There's lots of pilots going in here, but I'm moving my Greek city units forward. And those of you that watch my battle videos will know I'm going to go for his general. I'm going to try and smash through the units in front of his general there and move them forward there to take out that Scipioi general unit. Okay, my Macedonian ally is there as well. And it wouldn't surprise me if he bought over pike units to try and support me. Let's say he's got his cavalry there ready to counter any Scipioi cavalry attack that might come into my flank. Okay, so as I say, the battle plan here is to try and take out Srax. Uh, with my Greek city units and the uh, Macedonian pikemen. Okay, so that's the, uh, that's the battle plan there. As I say, Bubo's doing a good job here of holding the centre with his wide uh, Seleucid battle formation of his pikemen there. As you can see, the enemy Julii um, units are making inroads into his pike units there by moving forward in Testudo. Okay, so they have made inroads into his pike units there, but he is still doing well to hold there. Okay. As I say, um, you can see the archers here, the enemy archers, make no mistake, are targeting Bubo's um, pikemen, shooting into his flank. Look, that's a 120-man unit reduced to 49, and a 120-man unit reduced to 36 there. So those um, archers are really causing uh, a lot of casualties to Bubo's pikemen there. Okay, make no mistake of that, he has lost a lot of men there to archer fire. Okay. But he is holding well there, uh, as I say, holding and pinning those enemy Julii troops. But over here on the left flank, as I say, you can see I'm being extremely aggressive with my Greek city troops here. And I'm moving forward uh, with a goal of trying to take out that Scipii um, uh, general there. As a lot of you know, who watch my battle videos, you know that I do tend to go for the enemy general if I get a chance. Okay, so moving forward, as I say, I've got my Macedonian ally moving over. I think when... Um, Srax started to move back. My Macedonian ally thought that he was just going to keep running back and didn't move his troops forward too much there, thinking that uh, we were probably going to call off the attack. But um, my intention was to engage Srax as soon as I could with my Greek city units. As you can see, you can see the target. Can you see my Greek city units moving towards that Scipio general? I want to take out that Scipio general if I can. Okay, I've got a lot of Scipio units moving in on my flank here, but I'll just turn units to face a threat. Okay, I've, I've turned the nearest units to that threat to face the threat as such. Well, I'll move my other units forward there still towards the enemy general. Okay, so I will be defending my flank with units there, but I will be moving the bulk of my force forward. You can see my Macedonian ally is bringing his troops across now, seeing that I've engaged with the Scipio, enemy Scipio troops. You can see Bubo bringing his cavalry across, his cataphracts, and the Macedonian compa companion cavalry there are ready to charge in as well. Um, so you can see there's a lot um, a lot going on here at the moment as I'm moving forward here. But as I say, the uh, the two lots of cavalry that we're bringing across here now um, 
should uh, should help with uh, maybe taking out S Retro. But as I say, Bubo's doing a good job. But you can see he's losing a lot of his units here, mostly to arrow fire uh, from the enemy um, archers there. As I say, he hasn't got many troops left there. And as I say, the enemy Julio infantry have made inroads into his formation, and our centre is in danger of breaking. Steve, as I say, is facing um, Scipio and Brutio troops there. Okay, so Steve's um, Greek city army there is facing two Roman armies there. Okay, so he's doing well to uh, to stand there just in case they're going to try and attack. But as I say, our centre, um, the Seleucid there, are gradually losing a lot of troops here, and we could be broken in the centre. But meanwhile, over here on the left flank, as I say, I am moving forward relentlessly towards that Scipio general. Make no mistake, though, I've turned units to face a threat of these enemy Scipio units coming in on my flank. Okay, but as I say, the bulk of my troops are moving forward there towards that Scipio general. Let's say my Macedonian ally has just arrived there, and we've got Bubo's heavy cataphract cavalry coming into the fray as well. So to make no mistake, this is a great team attack here. Okay, Bubo, um, Dionysos, and myself here are all um, attacking Srax's infantry. As I say, this is a great team effort. New players to Rome Total War, this is what team battles are all about. Okay, so what I'm looking to do here is a hammer and anvil attack. I'm turning units to face the Scipio troops that are coming in on my left flank, but I'm taking the bulk of my troops forward to engage the Scipio general. Okay, what I'm hoping for is a hammer and anvil attack. My allies charge their cavalry into the rear of those engaged Scipio troops as a hammer, and on my troops there as the anvil. Okay, so we're looking for a hammer and anvil attack here. Bubo and um, Dionysus' cavalry smashing to the rear, while my troops, as I say, act as the anvil against those Scipio troops. And you can see Bubo's cavalry are attacking there. Don't make no mistake, he would have alt attacked and been using his effective against armor maces there. And as I say, we've got our Macedonian allies' pikes over there as well. But as I say, you can see the enemy Julio troops are making inroads into um, the Seleucid ranks there, and therefore threatening our center. Um, but I'd just like to show you something here. This is a great bit of teamwork by Steve Longshanks, okay? You can see some Julio troops coming around the flank. Okay, now Mad King has spotted a, a tactical move here where he's going to move his cavalry and infantry to a certain part of the battlefield, which would be round about, I would say, there. Okay, so he's going to move his army to round about there. Now, the reason for that is, can veterans watching this will know this already, he'll be looking to move his cavalry and infantry there and smash his cavalry into the back of Bubo's engaged uh, Seleucid pikemen there, okay? Now, that's a great tactical move there. If he can get round there, that'd be great because he'd take out all that Seleucid uh, infantry, make no mistake about that because they're tired and battle damaged. But Steve, with his years of experience, has spotted this look and is now going to reposition his army, okay, to protect Bubo's uh, rear there. Okay, so he's going to bring his Greek city units over there, as I say, to protect Bubo's rear from Mad King's tactical move there with his infantry and cavalry. Okay, so as I say, that's a nice bit of teamwork there by Steve. Okay, as I say, this battle is filled with great teamwork here, and I hope newer players from Rome Total War watching this can see um, some great teamwork here, as, uh, as you can see. But meanwhile, over here on our left flank, as I say, Bubo, Dionysos, and myself here are attacking Srax's is infantry. As I say, here comes that hammer and anvil attack, which I was hoping for. See Dionysos' his cavalry smashing into the rear. If you notice here, I'm moving my Greek city units forward as well towards those units. So uh, we've routed a great deal of Srax's infantry. But make no mistake, I'm still heading towards Srax's general. I want to take out that general. I want to take away that general morale bonus from their team. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. You can see Bubo's cavalry charging in here as well. Uh, just to pause the game for a second. Okay, so I'm moving forward. I want to take out Scipio General. We've got Boo-Boo's Boo cavalry coming in. And we've got the uh, Macedonian um, pikemen coming in there as well. Okay, so that's a great team effort there from Dionysos, Bubo, and myself there on our left flank. Okay, so great teamwork. Now, as I say, Steve here let's spotted the danger from what Mad King was doing there and has brought his formation over. And if you notice here, he is facing, he is now facing Mad King's infantry and cavalry and has now protected Bubo's rear. Okay, so as I say, nice bit of teamwork there by Steve. Spotted the danger and has now moved his formation over to face the threat from the enemy Brutio cavalry and infantry there. And as I say, defending Bubo's pikemen there uh, in the rear. Okay, you've got Bark's infantry. He may well move over and attack Steve from the flank there. And you've got, as I say, all of um, Ambirix is Julio infantry there as well. Okay, but meanwhile, over on our left flank here, we have taken out a heck of a lot of... 
um, the uh, enemy Scipio infantry. Esrax has still got his cavalry there that he's moved off into the woods. But as I say here, um, I, Esrax was a bit isolated and Dionysos, Bubo and myself have made the most of that by coming over here and taking out most of his infantry. Okay, as I say, new players to Rome Total War, this is what team battles are all about. Working maybe to a team plan and working as a team here. And as you can see, the three of us on this left flank here are really working well together. I'm trying to still take out um, s Ranch's general. I can see Bubo's cavalry in there, there using their effective against armor maces. There you go. That's just what we want to do. We've taken out s Ranch's general. We've routed him. So we've taken away the general morale bonus that he would have been giving the team. So that's a great, uh, great move for us. Okay, so as I say, the three of us there works really well um, together there. And remember, Steve is doing an anchor job. He's the anchor man of the team at the moment. Him and Bubo's infantry there are holding the centre ground there, um, even though they're being aggressively attacked by Julio and Brutio troops there, throwing their pilots in. As I say, Steve and Bubo's infantry are being the anchor of the team as it stands at the moment. Okay, remember at Bark and Mackin got a lot of archers there, which they've been using all the way through the battle. Um, probably shooting into Bubo's infantry as they know they're so susceptible to any type of missile damage. And the same Mad King's positioned his archers really well, so he can shoot directly into the rear of um, Bubo's engaged infantry there. That's why, remember that Bubo's units are 120 man units, and a lot of his units have been decimated by just missile fire, really. So, as I say, Steve and Bubo's infantry there are being the anchor of the team. Okay, we've taken out most of Etzrax's infantry on the left flank, and we are now moving over to the center there to try and relieve the pressure off of Bubo and Steve. Okay, so Dionysos is moving his Macedonians across there. Remember, all the time our archers are shooting into the enemy troops. And uh, as I say, a combination of Bubo's Seleucid cataphracts, um, Dionysus' pikemen and cavalry and my Greek city units have taken out, I think, basically all of Esrax's infantry now. Okay, you might have one unit left there, but I think basically our team effort here has taken out all, basically all of um, Esrax's infantry. We're now moving forward over to the center here with a view to take out the Julii infantry will be the next group of enemy infantry I think we'd be looking to take out. As I say, if you look at Steve and Bubo here, they have been the anchor of our team. They're holding the enemy up in the centre. Well, we've been doing our um, job, if you like, over on the left flank there. So, as I say, can you see Steve's units here facing forward, showing the weakest part of their units, their rear part of their units there, to the enemy archers. So, Mad King now could target the rear of those um, uh, Greek city units there. Remember that those are... The weakest part of any unit on Rome Total War is the rear, and that's where you can cause a lot of casualties if you can get your archers round to a particular angle to shoot into the rear of enemy units. Okay, so there's an overall um, situation of the battle as it stands at the moment. As I say, our Victorian, Mace uh, victorious uh, Macedonian troops and my Greek city units and Bubo's cavalry are now moving over to the centre. You can see Dionysos engaging those enemy Julio troops with his big Macedonian uh, pike units there. Okay, plus don't forget we're hitting them with um, with arrows as well. They're weakening them with arrows. Can you see what they're saying? Distraught over number of enemies. Distraught over en a number of enemies there. Okay, so their morale is rock bottom now because they're so distraught. Even the general, if I remember right, um, distraught by enemy. If, if you see there, can you see the general unit? Even healer with the general in is distraught at enemy numbers. Okay, so their morale is rock bottom. They're ripe for routing. And Dionysos is moving his big 120-man units in to try and take them out we've got our cavalry over there as well okay so that's what we want to do we want to try and take out these uh, enemy julio infantry there and that's what we're doing at the moment as i say their morale is so low now because they're so distraught by the numbers of enemy troops approaching them and as okay as you know if their morale is low they are ripe for routing and it wouldn't surprise me if all they need is a little push and they will probably route there and there's a big cavalry hit going in on them let's pause again for a second Okay, so as I say, uh, remember uh, he's moving, he's lifted his pikes there. Can you see Dionysus lifted his pikes to allow our Seleucid ally to charge his cavalry through? Remember, 
pikes and spears when they're down will kill friendly cavalry if you charge a cavalry through them so that's why Dionysos saw the cavalry come in lifted his pikes look to allow our Seleucid ally to come through his pikemen and smash into those Julii infantry okay so remember spears and pikes down will kill friendly cavalry if you charge a cavalry through them okay so that was a nice uh, teamwork once again there by Dionysos but as I say Steve and Bubo here have been the anchor of the team in the centre there holding the uh, the other enemy armies up there where we've been doing what we can over on the left flank okay okay as I say there's a lot of enemy archers been shooting into us and as I say a lot of Bubo's infantry would have suffered a heck of a lot of casualties from archer fire mostly okay all right you can see here s rax is cavalry now it looks like he's going to target my archers here he's probably going to smash into my archers with that cavalry um i've been using those archers for a long time on enemy troops here so um, my guess is that he will rout them but as i say the enemy julio general and those units there remember they had seven upgrades on that's why they're holding so well remember the experienced stripe gold shield gold attack but remember they were distraught by enemy numbers, so their morale was low, and they've just been smashed by enemy uh, cavalry or Seleucid ally and our Macedonian allies cavalry and pike units there. Okay, so um, that's why those units have routed there. They were hit from all sides. Okay, let's just pause again for a second here. So you can see that S-Rax is still trying to use his cavalry as effectively as he can and Mad King's Brutio cavalry. They've just taken out all my cheap archers there. Okay, so all my cheap short range archers have just been taken out by Srax and Mad King. Okay, now another tactical move here. Can you see I'm moving my Greek city's army over there towards the enemy Scipioi troops? Okay, now what I want to do, if I can with my army, is to suck in as many enemy units as I can to attack my Greek city's army. Okay, I want to try and get as many as I can to attack me, and then this will allow my allies, hopefully, to finish off the enemy Brutii army there. Okay? So that's what my intention is. Steve will probably come out of that defensive formation and attack the Brutio um, units there as soon as its allies get over there. But what I want to do here, I want to attract as many enemy units as I can uh, to my Greek city's army so that I can, uh, as I say, suck in as many units as I can so they can't support their Brutio ally and hopefully they'll attack my Greek city's units. Okay, so that's the tactical plan at the moment. As I say, to, for me to try and attract as many enemy units as I can to attack my Greek city's uh, army there, allowing my allies um, to attack the enemy Brutio team there, okay? So, as I say, uh, my guess is that um, Bubo there, can you see? I think he'd only got one or two infantry units left. Remember those 120 man units? You can see the dead um, Seleucid pikemen there. But also, like to draw your attention to that big bunch of Spartan dead there. Can you see that big group of Spartan dead? Can you see they've fallen forward there? And I think that's because they've been shot in the back. All those um, archers there have been shooting into the rear of that of that Spartan unit. And as you can see there, that is a massive clump of Spartans have been killed there by archers shooting it in the rear. That's an 82-man unit by the side of those, and they've only got 37 men left. So as I say, um, I think Mad King's been targeting the rear of our um, allies Spartans there. And as you can see, caused a heck of a lot of casualties there um, in that Spartan unit. In fact, it left a gap in that battle formation there. But as I say, I'm running my Greek city's army forward here. As I say, I want to attract as many enemy units as I can because while they're uh, bothering with me, they're not supporting their Brutii allies. So that's the uh, part of the battle plan here. Okay, I'm getting a lot of pilots thrown into me here. And I um, am I going to attack? As you know, I usually do with my Greek city units and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Bang! As I charge my... Uh, Spartans straight in, I run them in and then put the spears down as soon as I make contact. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna attack, trying to attract as many enemy units as I can. The cavalry that there's cavalry units in behind me here, and they could well smash into the rear of my engaged troops. But as I say, well they're fighting me, they're leaving their ally alone over there to be attacked by all of our um allies units there. Okay, as I say, Greek cities units have come out of defence mode, let's turn defence into attack and we'll attack the Brutio troops. We've got our Macedonian ally moving in there and our Seleucid ally moving in there. There's lots of enemy cavalry about there. You can see the um, Scipioi and Brutio cavalry out there as well. But as I say, um, I'm going to attack here with my Greek city units against these um, enemy Scipioi troops. And I'm hoping to make deep inroads into this formation here. Um, as I say, to uh, hopefully make them want to uh, want to attack my Greek cities. Right, see that Julio cavalry coming in behind me. Right, just pause again for a second. Okay, so that Julio cavalry is going to smash into the rear of my engaged troops here. But hopefully, I will spot that and turn my um, 
uh, Spears to face that threat as this is a hammer and anvil attack the cavalry being the hammer and that Scipio infantry being the anvil okay so make no mistake this is a hammer and anvil attack but the main threat is that cavalry coming in so what I should do is uh, turn my Spears to face the threat of that cavalry coming in that's what I should do there see that cavalry going down bang smashed into the rear of my units but if you notice I've turned my spearmen to face the threat of that Julio cavalry coming in there okay I've turned the threat I've, I'm not fighting those Scipio infantry anymore I've turned my spearmen to fight to face those Julio cavalry there okay one of my units routed on impact there from that cavalry 35 Spartans there just routed but I've turned my spear units there to face those um, enemy cavalry coming in there I'm no longer fighting Scipio infantry I'm just fighting that uh, that cavalry that's coming in there with those particular Spartan units there okay so that's what's happening I've got Julio infantry coming in on my flank um, but these units here further on down I'm still advancing forward towards that uh, that Scipio general there but as I say that's a massive cavalry hit there into the uh, the rear of my Greek city units but as I say I spotted that and turned my spear units to face that threat okay if you notice the Scipio general is really pushing in his infantry to attack the rear of my Greek city units here and as I say I've got other units still moving forward but I've managed to route several of those um, Julio cavalry there okay because as you can see here I'm facing that Julio cavalry attack but now I would turn my Spartans to face the main threat of the infantry but can you see there is Scipio cavalry coming in behind me as well I've got several units still moving forward I'm still attacking with those units towards the enemy um, Scipio troops okay He's got the archers there, he's probably going to alt attack and run in. But meanwhile, as I say, with me taking up the rest of the enemy um, units there, my team is now being able to take out, the team I'm in now is managing to take out the enemy Brutioi troops. Okay, which is part of the battle plan here. Okay, so Greek city Steve, our Macedonian ally Dionysos and Bubo's cavalry there are all smashing into the enemy Brutioi infantry there okay so I'm hoping that they'll be able to take that Brutio infantry out soon and come across to help me because make no mistake I am under a lot of pressure over there with all that enemy infantry and cavalry okay you can see um, some of um, Srax's cavalry here fighting the companion cavalry in general the Praetorian cavalry will beat the companion cavalry as a general rule of thumb if you like but over here as you can see I'm really trying to uh, do what I'm, my part for the team here and suck in as many enemy units as I can to attack my Greek city uh, units here okay you can see a lot of the um here can you see the um Scipio general there as alt attacked his archers he's even charged his archers into my Greek city units as well so but you can see that dangerous Scipio cavalry in behind me here I can see some of my Greek city units are starting to rout here let's pause the game for a second right that dangerous Scipio cavalry there is positioning itself here maybe to smash into the rear of my engaged units okay you can see that um, enemy uh, Scipio and Julio infantry really pushing into my Greek city units here and with that dangerous cavalry in behind there's a chance here that if he smashes it in I could rout okay but who do you think is going to prevail here? The Romans or the Greek city units? The Spartans, who do you think? Right, get ready. Make no mistake now that Scipio cavalry is ready to charge in. And here it comes. Um, bang! As he smashes into my Greek city units. Once again, I've um, stopped fighting the Scipio infantry. And I've turned my spearmen to face the threat there. Okay, so the main threat here to my infantry is that cavalry hit. So I've stopped engaging the um, Scipio infantry and have turned my spear units to face the threat of that cavalry. Okay, but look at my beleaguered Spartans there being hit from the rear from all sides and being smashed in by cavalry as well. Okay, you can see there, can this infantry hold? Remember my general is still alive. Okay, still giving morale bonus to these um, Spartan troops there. But as you can see there, my beleaguered Spartans are being hit from all sides. But I am doing the job that I wanted to. I am holding up a lot of enemy units here, allowing my allies to take out those um, enemy Brutii troops there. Okay, so I'm doing my bit there. Uh, as I say, helping out the team there by attracting a lot of enemy units to attack me while my uh, allies here are taking out that Brutii infantry. Okay, so that's the, as I say, that's the um, the general overview of the battle as it stands at the moment. I hope we hurry up and finish off that Brutio infantry because <laughs> I could do with some help over here. But as you can see there, as I say, I've turned my spear units to face a main threat to my infantry, which is the uh, cavalry attack there, okay? So I'm no longer engaging those uh, infantry there. I'm facing the cavalry attack, okay? 
That's what I'm doing at the moment, and hopefully being able to hold that cavalry attack there. Okay, so I've managed to repel that cavalry attack there. I will now turn to face the other main threat now, and there's that enemy infantry moving in on me. Okay, you can see um, several, several of my units, uh, or another unit of my Greeks are just starting to rout here. As I'm being hit by that, uh, that enemy infantry, as you can see, there's a heck of a lot. Right, can you see, I can see some Brutio cavalry looking to charge in on me as well. Um, but if you notice the numbers here, can you see, I can see units of mine starting to rout already here. But as I say, I'm doing the job for the team here. I am trying to attract a lot of enemy units here, which I've done. There's an enemy cavalry looking to charge in on me as well. Okay, you can see Bark has taken his Scipio cavalry over to another part of the battlefield here, looking to attack the Macedonians here from what I can see. Maybe a sandwich attack there. Esrax might charge in behind. But as you can see, Dionysus has got his pikes down here, ready to receive a cavalry attack. And you can see the first few cavalry men of um, Bark's uh, cavalry there being taken out by those pikemen. But as I say, it could be a sandwich attack there. But as you can see here, Steve and Dionysos and Booba have taken out all the Brutio infantry now. And I just hope that they can come across now to um, to uh, support me because uh, <laughs> I could do with a bit of support over there at the moment. But as I say, Steve running his infantry forward over towards me here. But as you can see, I'm just going to receive a massive cavalry charge there by that Brutio cavalry on top of the enemy uh, Julio and enemy Scipio infantry attacking me. Right here comes that Brutio cavalry. I'm Bang! As they smash into my tired Spartan units there. That is a massive cavalry hit there. But you can see my Spartans are still holding. Remember my general still alive, giving that cavalry charge, uh, giving that ch um, morale bonus and the Scipio cavalry charge as well. Bang! Straight into my Spartans there. Really trying to take out my Spartan units there. But as I say, my general's just about still alive, giving morale bonus. Steve just arrived. My Seleucid ally has just arrived as well. Just in the nick of time there, I think, because I think my units would have just folded there. You can see units, my units are starting to rout with all the pressure air of the cavalry and infantry. My general unit has got five men left in it, just five men. That unit's got 27 there, 12 men in that one unit, 12 men in, men in that unit, nine men in that unit. As I can see, it's been a very attritional battle there. Oh my gosh, 25 men in that unit. As I say, with the massive hits that I've been taking here, as I say, it was part of the team plan there that I was going to take as many enemy units on as I could to allow my allies to take out the enemy Brutioi troops there. So it was a good game plan there, and I'm really glad that uh, to see my Greek cities and Seleucid allies coming over here now to take the pressure off of my troops. Okay. So uh, that was a good, uh, I think that was a good bit of teamwork there um, from our team. And as I say, with Steve's um, units coming over, we've just taken out the uh, the Scipio general there. So with Steve's um, army coming over here, plus our Seleucid ally here as well, it wouldn't surprise me if those enemy Scipio troops started to um, started to rout there. And there you go. There's a mass rout of the um, of the enemy uh, Scipio troops that were left there. So I say, uh, newer players from Rome to War, I hope you enjoyed this teamwork battle there. Can you notice a lot of times during the course of that battle, there was a lot of teamwork involved there. Um, as I say, look at my troops. I've got two men in one unit there, look. You see just two men in that one unit, 18 in that unit. As I say, it was an extremely attritional battle there. If we go over here to where the battle actually started here, do you remember this is where Bubo, uh, Dionysos and myself attacked Esrax's infantry, where he was a little bit isolated maybe. And uh, we managed to take out his army. That's where the battle actually kicked off here on our left flank. Then we moved to the centre here where Bubo and Steve were the anchor of the team here. Holding against the enemy troops here. Allowing us to uh, make our move on that left flank against Esrax. You can see that clump of Spartans there where they were shot in the back. And you can see loads of Seleucid pikemen there where they were taken out as well. And then you can see where um, the enemy um, Brutii infantry and cavalry were taken out towards the final stage of the battle there by my allies. But over here, as I say, I managed to do what I wanted to do, and that was to suck in as many uh, enemy units as I can to attack my troops there, allowing my allies to um, to take out the uh, the enemy Brutio army there. So I say it's a nice bit of teamwork there by um, by our team. You can see um, there's still uh, enemy cavalry roving the battlefield there, uh, hitting selected targets. So you can see, um, see as I say, enemy cavalry still moving around trying to hit. Um, our, uh, our allies troops there but if you look at um, Bubo's infantry you'll see there's not a lot left of Bubo's infantry there remember those are big 120 man units just pause again for a second so if you look at Bubo's units there 18 men 
in that one unit there uh let's say 18 men there and then he's got 16 men in that and 40 men and remember these are 120 man units so that just goes to show how attritional the battle was you see that 15 men in a cavalry unit and 20 men in there can remember those are 54 man cavalry units there so you can see how attritional and if you look at my troops can you see i've got 18 men two men in that unit eight men in that unit uh 35 men in that unit which is a lot two men in that unit uh 10 men in that unit 22 remember these are 82 man units and three men left in my general unit so you can see actually by looking at the casualties i've suffered how attritional this battle was but as i say i think there was a lot of good teamwork in that battle there our macedonian ally there um suffered a lot of um, casualties as well so um as i say there it looks like our um <coughs> our team has managed to uh, to go on to win the battle there let's say i thought this was an interesting battle here pikes and spears against four roman armies okay so it, i thought it was an unusual battle you don't see that very often as i say it wasn't organized or anything like that it was just what people decided to choose okay can you see they're going for the macedonian general here see the scipio cavalry going for the master bang took out the macedonian general the final probably attack of the battle there and the Scipio general did what he wanted to do and took out the uh, the Macedonian general. So as I say, it looks like um, our team has, uh, as I say, managed to uh, to go on to uh, to win the battle there. As I say, you can see the casualties that we'd all suffered there. So as I say, it was a very attritional battle. Okay, so it says average victory there. I thought it would have been a closer victory than average, but maybe it was on a knife edge there, and it went for average. Just like to say that old Spartan army of mine got some good kills, managed to get the highest kills in the game there. But if you notice, Steve Longchamps, with exactly the same army as mine, has only got 699. But remember that uh, Rome Total War rewards attacking play with good kills. Okay, if you notice, I was extremely aggressive in that battle. That's why I've got the good kills. But Steve was uh, playing a pivotal part in the centre of the battle there. Uh, being the anchor of our team so only, only he only got 699 kills but that is only half the story because as i say him and bubo's infantry were the anchor of our team in that battle there and they were holding the center so really well done to um to steve there and bubo well done to bubo there he got some good kills too i thought um bearing in mind um, his infantry was defensive but of course his cavalry he used extremely effectively mad king got some good kills i bet that's a lot of archer kills in there and Ambirox got some good kills as well. Um, Srax probably didn't get the kills that he wanted to there, but he was a little bit isolated, I thought, and we did hit him hard and fast there, so he didn't get really a chance to um, to do the damage that he would have uh, he would have liked to have done there. But I thought it was an unusual battle there, spears and pikes against Rome. So I'd like to say really well done to Brotherhood member Mad King, really well done to Brotherhood member Bark, really well done to R2W player Ambirox. And really well done to IOW Srax. Really well played, guys. Some nice aggressive attacking by you guys. And uh, some nice teamwork as well. So really well played to you. And i just like to say, um, it was really interesting, I think, to see um, the Spears and Pikes factions here against the Roman armies. Really well done to Steve Longshanks. Really well done to Bubo. And really well done to Dionysos there. I thought, as I say, it was an interesting, unusual battle here. Just have a look at the, uh, the kills, the statistics of my Spartan army there. As you can see there, uh, not too bad. Like the top unit there killed uh, 154 for 78 casualties. Killed 160 there, 101, 117, 148 um, for 78 there. Uh, lost 70 men for 127, lost 45 for 100. As you can see, they did well. My archers didn't do that well because they were taken out quite early by Srax's cavalry. Okay, but um, there you go. That just shows the uh, the battle statistics uh, of that uh, the the uh, statistics of my army kills there so as you can see there i thought that was a really interesting battle there. as i say it wasn't an organized battle it was just a uh, factions that people decided to choose as uh, say uh, steve and myself went greek cities and, and then we had sally said mastodon against four good roman generals there so i hope you enjoyed this battle please leave a comment if you like it's always interesting to read what you think about our battles this is spark commander saying bye for now